Okay, detailed race profiles. Yes, the slug had to move. These are again into more of the thicker books. Uh, they are colored for a reason. It's not that I didn't want to put a spine on it. I literally have these colored purple for the main book, black for the maps and charts, blue for their detailed race profiles, orange for the quests and campaigns books. I find when you have them on a bookshop, it looks wonderful, but they're across the room and you know what? I'm tired. I'm not going to read from across the room exactly what I'm looking for. Where's the blue spine? That's the one I want. That I'll find across the room. I can point it out to someone, the blue spine, the orange spine. So these are actually designed to just have colored spines. They're not supposed to have more than that. This is one of the icons for the world. They, this is also his language from that world. 3D printable, both in game. Credits again, of course. Little table contents. I love this. You'll notice there are no right, no table page like markers here because they changed too often while I was doing it. But I could keep track of exactly where each major part happened and those I kept accurate. So I only had three numbers to keep track of. Okay, that worked. Again, you've got languages in this one. Picture of the universe proper, where is everything? That, like I say, those carry on every so many pages. Sometimes two in a row. Um, the way this book is set out, very similar, again, like the other books, the world, where they are in the universe. Again, that's Ashtar, that's Galaxios, so there's no sun in that part. Picture of what the alien looks like. Description of the alien. Historical setting, historical campaigns in other words, old battles to be relived, archaeological sites to be explored, machinery to be rebuilt, heroes, villains, food dishes, what do they like to eat? Their language, sample text, punctuation, pronunciation key, number system. We have their icons. There's songs, dances, sports. I do actually plan on literally writing songs for each race, and uh, it's not happening right now, but it will happen. Uh, let me work on the third quest and campaigns book before I get to the songs. But they have some icons they use. Again, their lore of Laxiot, uh, Akinol the Wise in this case. How do they mate? Do they, do they allow divorce? Not everyone does. Tourist sites, sacred sites. Animals, flora, and fauna. For each world, there's five of each. Describes what it is, what it does. The item, the effect, the notes. Now that's if you're hunting it. If it's hunting you, or if you're harvesting something, there's the animal, there's the attack, there's the strength. Attack stat, what is your defense? Well, its attack is 30 and it attacked you first. If you're attacking it, what strength does it have? Does it survive your attack? That's for the animals, it has that. Some of these have the effect where, you know, your vision improves, cannot miss a target for five turns. So that's if you're harvesting it, that's what you do. For these, water breathing for four turns. So if you harvest it, but you can't get a full sleep for six turns, there's consequences. We are into the flora now. Color images for each. I do apologize because, well, I'm the author and you have to deal with that. Local recipes. If you're going to go harvesting on other worlds, the point would be not only for a single effect, but what if you want to make a meal? So you can actually make Kalak Delight in this world. This is what you need. You buy the paprika in the store, but you need to get an eel. Get some pads, slice, dice, pulverize, because you gotta pulverize your food, really. Boil, cool, add parsley before serving. I'm pretty sure the parsley just happens to pop into your back sack. I don't think you can buy parsley. Uh, how much HP you get. Some of these though, some of the effects are you roll two, three, or four on a D6, plus 50 HP. Roll one, five, or six on a D6, you get 70 HP. So Kalako Surprise is a surprise. 
And it does that, that's that for every world. Again, picture of what a Kalmyshin looks like. Colorful symbol. Same symbols go through their details. Archaeological sites. This is a rather important one. That's how that this is technically how you get to the nine birth the very first time. It's after that the dark matter runs come into effect. Their alphabet, all the details of it, their symbols, their fabled hunts. What type of people are they? They're animals. Okay. Uh, 20 bugs crushed, coat weapon with paralytic effect for seven turns, harvest fresh bugs for continued effect. It's only good for so long. Then you gotta go kill more bugs. And this goes through every race. You know, there's an Ashtarin from the planet Ashtar. What's another? Let's see, there's nice symbols for that world. Uh, this world would be Katesh. Kaish is the name of their language from the planetoid of Kalesh. In the uh, Nine verse, the Katesh still live on their home world. In the universe proper, though, their world was destroyed when Kalmut went kablooey. So in the universe proper, the Katash actually live on a planetoid of Katash, which is a planet to them. It's an old planet, uh, planetoid they used to mine, and now they just live and mine on it. And it looks pretty much exactly the same. It's just a bit smaller. And you got some fish. Uh, this, it, this is a fang. It's a claw thing. Yeah, yeah. You got some fungus. Some fungus moves around and has eyeballs and teeth. There are spores, there's paralytics, poisons. There's blank pages with little things so that they aren't blank. There's the laxiot. This fish actually swims around in three parts and it does stay together. It, literally. It's a side effect of the fact that the Laxiot homeworld has the ability to stay together. Therefore, so do its fish. Even though they're three parts. Uh, jellyfish type creatures, stingray type creatures, each with a little difference. You know, that would be the Taxio. Harvest five for poison resistance for five turns. Poison damage is halved for that period, plus 10 HP each turn for the same period. Can grow on any world or in any potted abode. You actually can make your own base when you go through the, the one campaign, the one quest, sorry. And you have to do the campaign to unlock the quest. When you do the quest, you can have your own base and then you can plant a lot of these on your base. So you don't have to go world to world to get these, you just go up to the garden and that you've been growing your plants in. So there's a big point to that. So that's the DR, which we will be adding to because I like the uh, new DR face that uh, Heathen has suggested. And they're gonna be a subcast set from the mining facilities around DR. You don't quite look the same after exposed to gases for a while. So they've taken on a different visage. Same system. Another icon. More language, of course. You can still follow them. The Chovo from the planet Chovelin. They've got lovely little lava flows. Little volcanoes. Languages. Uh, antennas that they don't know what they're for. They're actually for studying the stars, but exactly how they're used. The ancients didn't quite leave a uh, instruction booklet. So nasty mean it, right? And it just kind of goes on and on and on for all the 14 races. And that's what this book is all about. Dice games. It describes the games that they play. What kind of gambling games do they have? This does have a few maps, the one world. Uh, different bunkers that you go down. Uh, different berries, again, different plants for all the worlds. Okay. Different 
least. Here's a lovely one. Some of the puzzles get in. When I get into the campaigns, you'll see that. That's the next video. There's the Plavians. I'm just double checking. Did I skip the. Uh... No, nope, I don't believe so. I want to make sure to do the Farshans as well. Lape goulash, anyone? Some uh, Veplen burgers. The Kelm? I did, I did skip them. They are, I do want to get to the Farshan. So I'm going to skip back, mind the flipping in front of the camera here. Here we go, the B2s. Basically, most of these races have a very humanoid uh, face with a neck, but some of them, of course, are different. These guys, the leaves peel in front so they can appear somewhat human because people relax more around a humanoid shape. They don't have to have this shape. They're a plant. Carnivorous. They eat people. They'll eat just about anything. Sometimes their own. So they're all vines all wrapped up inside leaves so that they can appear to have a head and make people more relaxed. And you know, either it's a ploy so they can get close to eat them, or they just want them to be to be trusting and and more open, and that way they can really uh, use and abuse them. Uh, they're really not a nice race. They are effective. Uh, give them the right tools, and then you literally eat the evidence. And uh, well, no one knows who you killed because well, you just ate them. You know, that's their world. The Farshan. They took over Plavia, and then, like I say, they were effective. They were rejected. Through in the second book, that's what uh, happened to them. And then, yeah, you just kind of keep on going. This is uh, lives on a vent of a spaceship. It's a nice little fungus and spore, the Eolian. Uh, I'll let you read the books and go through them. I won't cover the exact details. And I hope the lighting is good in these. I had beautiful light and then my phone died. And I had to wait to charge up before I could do more videos. So I will end this one and start another for the Quest and Campaigns book one.